Okay, Robbie wanted me to make a video, so I have nothing to talk about, so I thought I would ramble a little bit regarding Bigfoot and my new feelings regarding Bigfoot. Busby, you really want to go through that way? Like Atticus Finch would say, do you really think so? You're just smelling on other dogs' pee spots. So, like Rock left a comment saying, think of all the people who go camping and nothing happens to them, or they never see Bigfoot or whatever. That's how I used to think before I subscribed to Sasquatch Chronicles. I tell you, it's Sasquatch Chronicles that has changed my mind. Now, Sasquatch Chronicles is a blog talk radio station that has really taken off in popularity. It is run by two brothers, Wes and Woody, who had a Bigfoot encounter that sort of changed their their uh, ideas, beliefs on Bigfoot, because they grew up hunters, and they're kind of two big burly guys. Uh, Wes was a bouncer. They both work in construction. They both have shaved heads and black goatees. Sunglasses, you get the picture. Pickup trucks. In Washington State, they had an encounter that changed their lives. They are no longer think that they're real, they know that they're real. Bigfoot, that is. And a third man, William Jevning, who has uh, researched Bigfoot for like 30 years or whatever, um, former military guy. He had his own experience too when he was young. But anyway, their thing is they give a forum to people to call or write in to share their experiences and sort of uh, have a cathartic experience because so many people who reportedly see Bigfoot or a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch, uh, feel ridiculed or are ridiculed uh, into silence and they don't feel like they could say anything or talk to anybody because they're told that all oh, they just saw a bear or they must have been smoking something or drinking something etc etc so they keep quiet about it and this forum is giving people a, a, a catharsis or whatever you want to call it an outlet to share and um, they share research and new findings they laugh at uh, uh, hoaxes expose people it's really a good show and it's one of the reasons why it is so good and why it is so believable is because the people are so believable. Real people are calling, well, you assume that they're, well, of course they're real people, but honest people about their experiences call in and write in, and uh, very often they are upset about their experience. It said that they said that it has changed their lives or left an impact on them. They no longer go into the woods with the freedom that they used to feel because now they know what's out there. And one of the big things that Sasquatch Chronicles is sort of raising and they're vowing to to uh, reveal more and more, they, they claim that they have a government insider, or maybe more than one, anyway. But um, supposedly, of course, you know, here comes, here it comes, the big conspiracy theory that there is a uh, conspiracy of silence regarding Bigfoot Sasquatch because if it became known that these things existed and supposedly there are four types of them not just one but four um, of large bipedal unidentified uh, as yet primates not just in America but all over the world where there are similar uh, reports. But there's a con governmental conspiracy to keep it quiet, to uh, keep the whole topic in the realm of the ridiculous, the I had Bigfoot baby National Enquirer type. Because if it became known that they are real, and not only that, but that the government has conspired to keep it from becoming widely scientifically accepted and known and uh, validated, it would have a devastating impact on the, upon the economy. I guess the, the income from the state and national parks 
Uh, I don't remember if they said it was a multi-million or a multi-billion dollar industry that they claim would be affected if people knew that these things were real and were there and have sometimes become violent towards humans and have even uh, attacked and killed humans. Now there is a series of books out which I encourage anybody who, like rock, <laughs> has the attitude of, well, think about all the people who go out camping and they never see one. I had that attitude, too, because I grew up camping, and I, we never had any fear or any sightings of any kind. But this series 411 by David Paulides uh, documents missing people. It's called Missing 411, and he, he's written it in, in installments. And it talks about people who have gone missing... Throughout the United States and Lower Canada, I believe, he includes in the book, um, in the state parks and rural areas. And he, he's trying to expose how the there is a conspiracy of silence. Hi. Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> that there's a conspiracy of silence to cover it up and that they claim that they don't keep records on missing people who go missing in like Yosemite and all of these very popular parks. And he's exposed this. Now he, he, he has been very adamant. I've, I've uh, written to him myself. And he's very adamant in saying that he is not claiming that, that Sasquatch, Bigfoot, unknown primates are behind the disappearances. But... He is involved in Bigfoot research, he's written books on it, and if you read the books, it's kind of obvious that he is alluding to it, or at least the possibility of it, because of similar characteristics in each case, and it all sort of sounds like uh, the way a, 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 a stealthy predator in the wild would would accomplish these disappearances. But anyway, um, back to Sasquatch Chronicles. So, they're talking about how this is a government conspiracy and how they know it and how they have evidence and they have insiders who have made them privy to, uh, to emails from the, uh, what is it, the Forestry Department or the, the Government of the Interior or whatever. How they know that these primates are real, and they know that uh, on occasion they can turn dangerous and be a threat to humans. And when this happens, they say that, uh, uh, what is it, the FBI or some type of um, military unit has to go in and take them out. Has to kill the Sasquatches in the area that have become, you know, like a, like a rogue bear has been known to attack and eat humans. And it has changed how I feel about the way... <laughs> I keep asking myself... You know, there are weekly episodes. I keep asking myself, could this really be real? I have always thought, you know, how can large, large animals... Now we're talking seven feet up to like nine feet, usually they're reported, it's for males. How can these things exist in our modern world? And they're, you know, they're claiming they're like in almost every state. Um, and they've, they're, they're not seen more often. Dead ones aren't found. Blah blah blah. Of course, they always have a uh, an answer for that, saying that dead bodies do not last long in the wilderness. Blah blah blah. All this and that. But anyway. Uh, it has changed how I feel, and I will feel kind of strange from now on going camping, especially at night. Um, one of the things that David Politis talks about in his books, I'm out of, out of breath. Supposed to be was walking fast there. That uh, one of the common denominators for people going missing in the state parks or whatever are people going in alone with their dogs. <laughs> and wearing bright colors. So as you can see, I am not wearing bright colors even though I am walking alone with my dog. 
but I was not out in the forest either. So, but it, it really is making me think, and I really do. You know, I have to ask myself: Do I believe these people? Do I believe Wes and Will and Woody? Would they be lying about their encounters? And is this just a big hoax? I don't think so. I really believe these people. They expose hoaxers. They laugh at them, make fun of them, and denigrate them for dragging the subject into the toilet. And, and if I believe them, then I have to believe that these things are real. And it just boggles my mind. And it boggles my mind to think that there could be a government cover-up to keep the economy from being affected. <laughs> Because people would not want to go into the wilderness areas in the ways that they did if they know that these things are out there. Yahoos could be going out there with shotguns, killing everything that they see. Uh, federal lands, or, or whatever you want to call it, wild lands, would maybe be set aside with impact on um, lumber industries and all this kind of stuff. So, I don't know. I think it's believable. My mind is open. And I think I want some, like, bear spray <laughs> for when Busby and I go walking in the, in the forest preserve. Because, you know, that forest preserve we walk in, there was a case on Bigfoot um, BFRO that documents sightings and stuff all across the country. Right up at Lions Woods where we go walking, there were footprints found, like, last year or the year before in the snow. And where we go camping at Buffalo Rock, just... Last year, there was a sighting at the, the, the Tumuli effigy mounds that Busby and I walked on a couple years ago. I don't know. It just makes you think. Uh, I thought I would just come on and chat about that in Sasquatch Chronicles, which is my new obsession. If you want to check it out, they have a Facebook page. Um, they go by two names, actually. Bigfoot Hotspot Radio, but they're, the name that they really want to be known by is Sasquatch Chronicles and um, they have a Facebook page they have Twitter and they also ha um, now have a website which of course I am a member of and it's very interesting and there's there are at least one episode per week of people calling in writing and talking about their encounters and of course discussing the quote-unquote conspiracy and so forth if you have any interest in the topic or Want to know more about what I'm thinking about, you might want to check that out. Okie dokie. Well, I'm going to go in because I'm cold. It's supposed to get down to, what, 5 degrees tonight? Be really cold and sucky. Ice has been falling off the roof. Thank God it has not been to bust your eye yet. But it makes a big clattery noise when it does. You can see I've been making paths for Busby so he can get around and see how he... <laughs> He can't get around very well without a path. Although the snow has sunk quite a bit from our blizzard. It's not as much as it was. But it's supposed to get cold and snow again this weekend. Okay, I'm going to go in now. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.